Now you're ready to start fitting the preformed hip and ridge shingles that are supplied. I've drawn them, I've probably drawn them a bit flatter than they are. They're probably put together at a bit more of a steeper angle, but don't try and force them down flatter, just put them as they are. The first one goes on in the corner with around a 70 mil overhang from this point here to this point where it would intersect the corner here. One thing I forgot to mention on the last video is that as you go up fitting the normal shingles what you should do is mark with a pencil where the batten is below the shingle. This is useful for when you're fixing the preformed hip shingles. And you want to do your pencil mark obviously far enough across the shingle so that you haven't hidden it when you put the shingle on. So you put your first shingle on with that 70 millimeters overhang and you fix it if there's a fixing down here, fix it here into a batten below and fix it here. It's, you use the 20 mil fixings that you're using, either staples if you're using an air nailer with the information we give, or if you're hand nailing, it's a 20 mil nail. Okay, so there's the first one. And then let's go on to the second instruction. And you fix them all the way up the hip. Um, you could check now and again by standing over here looking through this corner that they're going straight or if you've got a helper um, just get them to tell you you know whether you're wandering off or not. And then it's called the exposure. It's the distance from this point to this point, i.e. the bit that is exposed. So that's the distance for fitting. And the distance with hip shingles is different from the exposure on the normal shingles. The, the exposure on hip shingles is 200 millimeters. So you've got your first one on, you put the next one on, and you've got your pencil marks here where you know your batten is. So you fix through to a batten, and then the same all the way up to the top. And then, depending how long your hip rafter is, depends how you finish at the top. I've just left it like this at the moment. You may need, um, from here to here, you may need another um, hip shingle because you might have round about 200 millimeters exposure still left. So you have to put that on. Okay, and then when they go up, you cut them as I have done here. So you've got to the top with your last one, each one being 200 millimeter exposure. So this side of this, although I've got them all together, this side of this last shingle, you cut straight down the center of the whole gazebo, which you'll see because it's in line with your ridge here. And then this side, you cut along the ridge. So you would have held your shingle on and then scribed down there and scribed along there. It doesn't have to be acutely accurate because this is all going to be hidden with your other hip shingles. So you've got to there. Then do the same with the other side. So you're looking like that. This is the one I'm going to put in. So you'd finish up looking like that on all four hips. If you can see that in there. Then, as you've seen, 
what you do, just lay a shingle on that's around about 100 millimeters width. Lay it on, scribe along these edges here, and then fit that shingle. And that can, you don't have to hit a button here, put two or three fixings here and two or three fixings down to here. You won't see them because you've got such a build up here, they won't come through. So that's that fitted. And you do the same the other end. And all those are for is to protect this join here that wouldn't be watertight otherwise. So there's the stage we're at now. I'll just do this next stage and stop there. So when you get to the ridge along here, these are of course for rectangular gazebos. I'll do another video for uh, when you're installing a square gazebo. On a square gazebo you don't have a run of ridge. Uh, I'll see if I can pick that out there. It's very difficult. No, it's too difficult with all the um, different elements. Um, but on a square gazebo you have a ridge block. So what you do, I've made these different colours to show how they go. They're the same shingle, I've just made them into, well not colours, into different material. And what you do, you start either ends symmetrically. So this is the fat end of this end, it would start from here, and you overhang this shingle here by about 20 or, well a bit more than that, about 30 or 40 millimetres. So this, the end of this one comes past this junction here, about 30 or 40 millimetres. Do the same the other end, you know, so there's, it's, it's, it's not vital, but there's a bit of an overhang. Okay, so they go like that. So this one, this end, the fat ends this end. You don't just start one end and carry on, you start from opposite ends. So there's your first two. I'll carry on now. Okay. And then you had your first two. And then what you do is you do your 200 millimeters from there to there, 200, and from there to there, 200. And you want them to join in the middle. They won't join because of the length, so cut them off so you get a butt joint in the middle. I've just staggered it a bit there, it's just the way I've done it, but they do hit each other. So that's what you do there. They hit each other. And then the last thing, again coming this way, this won't be 200, this would be about 100 or 120, you know, just, just by eye. Then you double up you put one underneath here and finish with one on there on top and that's the effect you get so it looks like that these would you can see a gap under there you know this is uh, just a computer sort of uh, image or video these would settle down a bit and you wouldn't have I've just got to say there you wouldn't have any daylight or anything up there Okay, so that's finished. I've done another one here, I don't know why. But um, that's it, completed.